Hello and welcome to another video on the Fossil Hybrid HR. Fossil recently released software version 5.0 and they've changed a lot of things which has made many people unhappy. The update is finally available for me so in this video I'll show you what the current UI looks like both in the app and on the watch and how the update changes things. Right now I'm on software version 4.9 and as soon as I open the Fossil app I get this update message. I'm going to ignore that for a second and quickly show you what the current interface looks like before we start the update. On the main page we've got the metrics at the top, so step count, active minutes, active calories and sleep data. Mine is all empty because I haven't synced my watch for a while, but you can see I've got my daily step counts on this page. I can tap the stopwatch for my active minutes, the fire for active calories, the heart for my heart rate, and the moon for my sleep data. And for each one I can just scroll through my history. So all this information is on the home page, then at the bottom, like I've shown in previous videos, we've got the customization page where I can change watch faces, dials, side buttons. Then we have alerts, which is where I can adjust notifications, alarms and move alerts. And then we've got profile where I can adjust settings like auto workout detection and goals and everything else. If I tap on what's new here, we can see that the new update brings dynamic cards, step goal recommendations, and an entirely new app layout. It also says Alexa is built in, but that's only for the brand new Gen 6 hybrid models. For older models, like my one, we don't have a microphone in the watch, so we don't get any Alexa functionality. That's only for the new watches. Now that we've looked at the current UI, let's go ahead and update the app to the new version. The update is done, so let's have a look at what's new in version 5.0. Straight away there is a brand new splash screen with a nice diamond animation and we get this new home page. In the middle is my hybrid HR and it's asking me to connect my watch but I'm not going to do that yet. Underneath that we've got a new section called updates. It's got little cards like turn on your notifications, get new straps, fossil style, sign up for offers, all that stuff. Not entirely sure I would classify them as updates but okay. Below that is my wellness information, which shows step count, active minutes, active calories, heart rate, and sleep data. I'm not entirely sure, I like all this info being at the bottom of the screen, because I'm used to seeing it at the top on the main page as soon as I open up the app. That's going to take a while to get used to, but tapping any one of these icons brings up the full wellness dashboard. So this is kind of similar to the old UI, where you can tap on the icons to see the details, and you can scroll through each one for your history. The step counter section has this new area for streaks, and as you can see I'm on day one right now, and I've just got 100% left of my goal to do, so, you know, I'm getting pretty close. Let's go back to the home screen and see what else we've got here. In the top right corner, if we tap on the little watch icon, we can see some details for the current device. So this includes battery details, the date I last synced it, serial number, calibration, and find my watch. I can also remove the watch from here. If we swipe right, we can also pair a new device if we tap on that button and follow the instructions on the screen. That's everything in this area, so back to the main screen, and what else do we have? Okay, tapping on the three lines in the top left corner brings up the side menu, where we've got our account settings, wellness settings, help, and about sections. At the bottom, we can also log out of the app, and you can see here that I'm on version 5.0.1, which is interesting, I thought it was just version 5.0. Anyway, let's start at the top. Tapping on my name just lets me change my profile picture, name and password. Wellness lets me look at connected apps, which is basically just Google Fit. Preferred units lets me switch between distance and temperature units. Tapping on profile brings up my date of birth, gender, height and weight details. And then tapping on set goals brings up this menu to adjust my wellness goals. Dynamic goal is a new feature introduced in this update and it basically adjusts the goal based on your previous fitness data instead of keeping it at a fixed number. Let's go back to the side menu and tap on help, which brings up the FAQs, repair center options, and different ways to contact Fossil. It's also where you can delete your account, and it's kind of weird that that option is here instead of the profile section, or maybe the account section, but okay. Tapping on about brings up this menu, which has various opt-in details, terms of use, privacy policy, and open source licenses. That about covers the main content in the app for now. Once I actually connect my hybrid HR and sync it, I'm sure more features will show up like customization options and app notifications. Now that we've taken a quick look at what the app looks like both before and after the update, 
Let's move on to the Hybrid HR. I've kept my phone's Bluetooth off so I can show you what the current UI looks like on the Hybrid HR before I update it. So you can see I've got my dials here on the main watch face. The step counter has got a gold ring around it, which is currently empty because I haven't taken any steps. I've got the date on the right, the heart rate at the bottom, and my battery levels on the left. Some of my dials have white text on black background, some of them have black text on white background, so it's a variety and it looks pretty good. As for the buttons, I've also set my shortcuts up, so pressing the top button brings up my workout options. The middle button shows me my wellness dashboard. And the bottom button brings up my media controls. Going back to the main watch face, long pressing the top button hides my dials. Long pressing it again brings them back. Long pressing the middle button opens up the menu and I can scroll through it using the top and bottom buttons. You can also see that the watch hands move to the 9 and 3 position so I can easily read the content on the screen. At the bottom here we've also got my battery icon and the disconnected icon because of, of course my watch isn't connected to my phone right now. Long press the middle button to go back to the home screen and finally long pressing the bottom button brings up my unread notifications. Of course this is also empty because my phone's Bluetooth is off. So that's again a very quick overview of what the current watch UI looks like. I'm now going to turn on Bluetooth on my phone and sync it with the watch, so hopefully doing so will update the Hybrid HR and we'll finally see what the big fuss is about. I've turned on Bluetooth on my phone and you can see that the disconnected icon disappears from my Hybrid HR. So I'll open up the app and that should start the update process. Okay, so the update took about a minute to do and the watch vibrated when everything was done, so let's go ahead and look at the new interface. The main watch face looks the same, except I've lost my gold ring around the step count and my battery icon is now vertical instead of horizontal like it was before. But aside from that, there are no big changes that I can see here. Let's move on to the button shortcuts. So the top button brings up my workout options and we've got a new radial menu style here, which looks pretty cool. I can use the top and bottom buttons to navigate the different options, and the hands move around and the text changes for each option I pick. So I can use the middle button to select an option, and then from there I can use the middle button to go back, or the bottom button to actually start the workout. It's similar to how Pebble OS used to do things, except Pebble smartwatches had dedicated back and select buttons. On the Hybrid HR, I think the middle button is trying to play both roles, and it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Let's go back to the main screen, and pressing the middle button should bring up the wellness dashboard. Okay, so it's not doing that, so I'm just going to long press to go back to the home screen, and we'll try long pressing it instead. Long pressing it also brings up the menu again, so I guess they got rid of that shortcut option for the middle button? We'll look at it later in the app. For now, we're already here, so let's look at this menu. Again, we've got this radial interface to navigate, so moving up, we've got notifications, media controls, ring phone, and weather. And then it jumps down to stopwatch, timer, workout, wellness, and settings. The battery icon is in the middle there, just like in the last version, but it now shows a battery percentage, which is pretty useful. Another cool feature is that I can long press the top or bottom buttons in any menu and the hands will spin around until I let go. So let's say I quickly want to jump to stopwatch. Instead of tapping the top button however many times that is, I can just hold it and let go when the hands get to stopwatch. That is a much quicker and more visual way to get around the menu compared to the list menu in the previous version. I actually quite like that change. Let's go back to the main menu by long pressing the middle button, and now we can test the bottom button, which should bring up my media controls. Okay, so that shortcut button is working as normal, but the media controls look very different. We've got the top button to play paused music, and then the bottom button to access the rest of the controls, like skip tracks or change volume. Now, this is just my first impression, but the media controls are absolutely terrible. It makes no sense to have multiple button presses just to change the volume or skip tracks. The skip track icons actually block the song detail so you can't read that properly. And also, the skip track controls are backwards, which makes no sense. Usually, to go to the next track, you long press the volume up button. To go back, you long press the volume down button. Here, it's reversed, and I don't know why. 
So based on the media controls only, I can definitely see why people might be upset with this update. But let's go back to the main screen and test out the long button presses. So long pressing the top button hides my dials, and long pressing it again shows them again. We already know that long pressing the middle button brings us to the menu, so long pressing the bottom button should show me notifications, which it does. This has also got a slightly updated look, and just like everything else in this update, instead of the hands moving to the 9 and 3 positions, both hands move to the 9 o'clock position, so you can see the icons and the button controls on the right. So those are the main interface changes on the Hybrid HR. Let's see if any new features show up in the app now that it's connected to my watch. Looking at the home screen, I can now tap on my Hybrid HR, which shows me this updated customization screen. I can scroll through a bunch of watch face designs here, including my favorite ones, my recently used watch faces, and something called my style, which I think is watch faces that I've modified or made changes to, maybe? I'm not entirely sure. And then there's gallery, which includes the official fossil designed watch faces. We've got three light versions here, and the rest are just dark. I can then tap on the watch to customize it further. There are options for background, stickers, and text on the left. And on the right, if I tap on data, I can change the dials. Let's go back to the main customization screen, and I can tap on pusher on the right, and that shows me my button shortcut. So it does look like the middle shortcut is gone now, because we just have the top and bottom button shortcuts. That is a bit disappointing because I did use that middle shortcut quite a lot. So that's a quick look at the customization changes. And finally, we can look at notifications and alerts, which we can access by pressing the gear icon on the top right of the customization page. Here we've got alarms, which we can add and label using the button at the bottom. We've also got notifications, which let you choose what apps you want notifications for. I don't really see an option for customizing or choosing specific notifications for each app, it's just on or off. You can also choose which contacts to get notifications from as well as modify your quick responses. I don't see an option here to add a new response, so I guess you're limited to just two which you can edit. Back in the main menu we can select wellness tracking which gives you options for auto workout detections for runs, bike rides and walks as well as a rowing machine. And we have the option for move alerts if you want to enable that. And I think that's about as much as you can do with notifications and alerts in this section. So as you can see, with the 5.0 software update, a lot of things have changed, both on the Hybrid HR and in the Fossil app. Some of the changes are good, some are not, and at least one of them is absolutely terrible. I'm still getting used to the update myself and going through all the different features, but if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, Feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you and your family are safe and well wherever you are in the world. This has been Zaim Siddiqui from Zeus Reviews, over and out.